I have a rule system that I still um, live with today. If you want to have a civilized society, you can't be doing really bad things like burning down this building, stealing, and killing people. And this is a rule system I actually figured out in high school. I actually categorized the world's rules. Courtesy rules to help people get along. Then we got to have some places where we can break stupid school rules. Like, um, okay, in New York, for example, how do you uh, get into college without passing the exams? You send a portfolio to the right professor. And how do you find the right professor? Well, I can tell you, it's easy on the internet these days. You go through each college's webpage and you go through all the professors and then you read all their stuff. And then when you make up a portfolio, don't put too much junk in it. You put four or five things in it, they open it up in its way out, and you send it the old-fashioned way by U.S. Postal Service because they're not going to open the attachments. They just won't do that. And then you have the rules where if you break them, you're really in trouble. And when I was in high school, it was uh, sex, drinking, and smoking. And since they knew they could trust me on these, they let me do lots of illegals but not bad as long as I was discreet about it. And you know, now there's a lot of some little thing gets you on the sex offender list. That's something where it, can, it gets in the sins of the system category. These are things where the penalties are draconian and you don't touch these things. Another thing when I was a child, the childhood heroes on TV had very clear cut values. I mean, I grew up with Roy Rogers rules for living. You want to look them up on the internet? There's some good rules for li living. Roy Rogers rules for living. Now let's go back to the hidden painful medical problems. Acid reflux, heartburn, big number one. You'd think the guy with heartburn would grab himself here. It's not what happens. They'll go. I saw a video that a, that a Dr. Brewey in Boston, a gastroenterologist, showed. And they also, some of these kids will not sit. You try to get them to sit, they jump up. You try to get them to lay down, they jump up. That's because the acid's hurting. It's a medical problem. Why don't you treat it with some acid reflux treatment? No, you probably don't have to endoscope them. That's too expensive. There's stuff over the counter you can treat it with. Don't lay down after eating and get the head of the bed up about this far to hold the acid in the stomach. That works for me. Uh, constipation, urinary tract infection, yeast infections are just driving me crazy. I've had to go on a low-carb diet. I've taken gluten out and I've taken 10 tons of sugar out and I got my yeast infections under control. I saw a picture one time that was taken down a guy's windpipe that had moss growing in it. Now, you can imagine what that's going to do to his behavior. An ear infection, a tooth that's gone bad. These are all the things that you've got to you know, try to figure out. The urinary tract infection, the yeast infection, those are easy. There's simple little tests you can do for that. Uh, ear infection, the doctor just has to look in it. The bad tooth, uh, one thing you can do is just press on the teeth. And, 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 and if he goes, oh, then you know he's got to, you just do this. Because we've got to figure out ways to, you know, we saw, I know there's a lot of low-income situations, uh, how we can find that without spending a ton of money. Uh, this is my uh, squeezing machine. When I got into puberty, I started having horrible anxiety attacks. Now, in the earlier talk, you heard about ways to calm down anxiety. My anxiety, most of it was biology. My sympathetic nervous system was ready to fight off predators when there was no predator. Imagine what it would be like we lock up this room and we're going to have the hotel cater it and we're going to bring in porta potties but we're also going to bring in about 50 of the most deadly snakes in the world and you're, they're going to spend the next, you're going to spend the next two days in this room with them. Now you can imagine you would just be always looking for danger. You would be late, you know, then you'd sleep on the tables and pray that it, it wouldn't get up on the tables and I'm thinking about how I can catch them in the tablecloths and <laughs> and, uh, you know, and, 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 and kill them with those things that, in the trade show booth things. <laughs> you know, but it, my, my nervous system was always, you know, any little thing was in a state of constant arousal. And I've been on antidepressant medication for 30 years and I wouldn't be here without it. And a little tiny dose. Thinking in Pictures has a whole big description in there on medication. And I'm horrified at the amount of powerful drugs being handed out to kids like candy. I want to, hopefully I want to try to get through my medication part just really, really quickly. Exercise also helped me. Kids have got, adults have got to be getting exercise. You want evidence-based medicine? There's plenty of evidence-based medicine for exercise having good effects on the brain. Another thing is the fish oil supplements. They have really good effects on the brain. And they take about two or three months to work because it's got to incorporate into the fat. That's not going to happen. 
happen overnight. Um, and then the special diets, the wheat-free, dairy-free, low-carb, those help some people. You know, of all the biomedical things, that's probably one big number one to try. Fear, the, my main emotion. And there's a rear view of the squeezing machine. Now the thing is, some people are pressure responders and some are not. This is where autism gets very variable. Now there's a therapist just doing some pressure with beanbag chairs. When you're doing something like this, try doing some ABA, try doing some speech. Because sometimes when you do something like this, it, it, like, it helps the, the, the hearing. You know, it's sort of like taking the mobile phone outside when it doesn't work. You get a little window of opportunity of less scrambled. But remember, 20 minutes and then you got to get it off. The effect wears off in about 20 minutes. Here's another um, OOT swinging a child, slow swinging. Maybe try singing. Help the, you know, try doing some speech therapy right while you're doing this. Maybe sitting on a ball. There's a little kid sitting on a ball, but no more than 20 minutes on the ball. They got a little weighted vest that helps some kids, it doesn't help others. But don't make them wear that vest all day. Because the effect, it, you know, then I get asked, well, if a weighted blanket helps him sleep at night, you've got it off for more than 20 minutes. And I go, yeah, but he's asleep by then. <laughs> you know, so fine. And these are some of the simple sensory things that you can try. I think it's important to desensitize little kids so they'll enjoy being hugged. I wanted to feel the good feeling of being hugged, but it was too overwhelming. Desensitizing to the deep pressure, that's a whole lot easier than desensitizing to scratchy clothes. You're not getting wool against my skin. That's just uh, not going to happen. And being able to get that feeling of hugging, I think, helps you give you a feeling of kindness. We've got to start thinking about employment and after what happens after school. As soon as kids are in middle school, we need to start having them do jobs. When I was 13 years old, mother had me working for a seamstress. When I was 15 years old, I took care of nine horses. I was doing carpentry work, making signs. When I was 15, I went out to my aunt's ranch and I built the gate. And, that was, and they duplicated my gate exactly in the movie. I actually built that. Um, when I was in college, she got me an internship at a research lab. And then also my science teacher, who was uh, really presented really well in the movie. Mentors can really make a difference. You know, let's say, you know, might be um, somebody who works in the auto industry could work with a kid to teach him how to fix cars. Or a photographer can teach um, a kid photography. And it doesn't matter if the skills are old. Let's say a computer programmer taught them Fortran, you know, something that's ancient. What you're doing is turning them on. You've got to get them turned on. It doesn't matter if it taught them vacuum tubes. You're getting them turned on. You've got to take them out and visit interesting places. You know, if my science teacher hadn't shown the film about the optical illusion room, I wouldn't have made the optical illusion room. And in the movie, they showed the exact Bell Labs film that I actually watched in high school. You know, there's trade journals, you know, there's all different kinds of trade journals for every kind of industry. Uh, You've got to show them interesting stuff. And with the internet, there's all kinds of interesting stuff. Well, this, this is our ugly ski tow house when I was in high school. And uh, there it is before, and there it is after. Now, I didn't decorate it with cattle and horses. I decorated it with tongue and groove siding on white trim. I made something that other people would like. That's a very, very, very important skill. No, I couldn't paint it turquoise and pink. Uh, that would not have been appropriate. Get kids into things like Lego Mindstorms robotics clubs. And you can go on the internet and there's all, all kinds of websites on, um, on Lego Mindstorms robotics. Uh, another really good thing is Google SketchUp. That's another really good thing. But they've got to make a robot that does an assigned task because they've got to learn how to do something that somebody else wants. There's my drawings. I always like to show those off. And there's one of my systems made in Google SketchUp. And that's a free program. Uh, and there's all kinds of forums on the internet, Google SketchUp. There's a lot of rubbish on the internet. But there's also a lot of really wonderful stuff on the internet. And the community colleges have a lot of great career-related courses, the technical schools. Uh, in university courses, and a lot of universities right now have free courses online. Type in things like Open Courseware Consortium, Open Courses, Free Courses, uh, Open uh, University. Use some of those keywords. 
MIT has a whole, a whole lot of lectures. Some of them are whole beautiful lectures, some of them are just course notes. But there's all kinds of free information, especially in the sciences, online. Here are some great science websites. Um, you, know, you know, you just have to you know, be good at making up key words. You can find all kinds of stuff. You know, but there needs to be some mentoring, okay? Like, because, you know, kids are just going to play video games unless they're, um, unless they're mentored. And the thing I get concerned about video games is they're so addictive. It should be limited to an hour a day. If you want to spend eight hours a day programming a game, fine. But for every kid that can learn how to program a game, there's like 15 others who just get addicted to them, and they're not going to be able to program a game. I would have been Miss Video Game Addict if they, those had been around when I was young. And there's the optical illusion room, and I was interested to find out um, that from Mick Jackson that the, um, that the stage crew had a hard, real hard time building this, even when they had the drawings, because they had to build an actual real optical illusion room, and, even with, and I did not have the drawings. I was allowed to have one glimpse of the shape that's like this after I'd worked on it for a month. And there's the special effects crew with Stuffy the fake steer that drowned. And, uh, actually, and that whole thing with the cattle drowning actually happened. You know, they messed up my design and then they fi we fixed it. There were a lot of people that had Asperger's I saw on that movie site. I'm not going to tell you what they were doing. We have to keep the, their identities uh, confidential. Uh, I can't be uh, giving out names of people that I think are Asperger's. But that might have something to do with why the movie came out so good. And there's the meat plant where I started my career. And how did I get in? It was a chance meeting. It was very similar to the movie. I actually met the wife of their insurance agent at a cattle function. And they changed it a bit where I met the wife of the plant manager. But it was a chance meeting. You just sometimes just never know what might open up the door. And the scene in there with the deodorant, that happened. <laughs> and I was mad at my boss when that happened, but now I thank him for it and the scene of the bull testicles, that also happened. Okay, let's look at jobs for people, visual thinkers. What I do with the livestock stuff is industrial design. See, when you design a product like an iPod music player, the industrial designer came up with the idea of the little thing you rub your finger around. The engineers had to figure out how to make it work. You know, so industrial designers, engineers work together, and the industrial designer is the visual thinker, and there's whole courses in this in the university. Uh, graphic arts, drafting, fixing cars, fixing computers, architect, animal trainer, uh, the, a photographer, there, if they, and, and, and freelance. That's the way I went, freelance. It avoids a lot of politics. You go in, you do the project, get out before you get involved in all the office politics. And another thing I had to learn, sex, religion, and politics, let's leave those subjects at home. You don't, those don't belong at work. And how about our pattern thinkers, our music and math minds? How about a math teacher, scientist, engineers? And we need more kids going into engineering. I'm just appalled, and I've talked to some tech companies that they have to go to India or China to get the right engineers. Why aren't we producing them here? Well, what are they doing with their Asperger kids in China? I can tell you what Indian parents do with them. <laughs> I've talked to them. They go, smart, naughty, computer school, engineering school. That's what Indian moms say. And, you know, because I'm seeing too many smart kids going down a bad path they shouldn't be going down. And they're going to need to learn about Asperger's, especially in their personal life. But I've seen too much where Asperger's or autism is defining them so much that all they want to do is autism stuff. Uh, statistics is a great field to go into, where you do data mining, with electronic medical records. There's going to be a ton of that going on. How about a verbal minds? Journalists, translators, teachers, um, speech therapists, stage actor, accountants, anything to do with record keeping. You know, we've got to figure out what can they be good at. A lot of these kids love history, but there's no jobs in history. And, I, and they want to major in history in college. And I've seen it. I went to school with a guy that majored in history, he has a PhD in it. He's been employed all his life. I'm almost positive he's an Asperger. And, uh, but underemployed, you know, mainly in retail jobs, managed to keep them. You know, good, you know, they're jobs that have health insurance, but they're not jobs you need a PhD in history in. I think when in college we've got to be thinking a lot more about 
What are they going to do? When they get in middle school, we need to start thinking about what are they going to do. We don't wait until they graduate to do that. Here are bad jobs. Well, cashier in a busy restaurant is not going to work. I have problems with the, with the multitasking and the short-term memory stuff. And how about the nonverbal folks? One of the things they've got to do is find employers willing to work with them. Walgreens has done a lot of really innovative stuff for their warehouses. They've redone all the computers so you don't have to read to, to use the computers, you know, load out the stuff. You know, lawn and garden work, stocking shelves. You know, there's a, you know, a lot of different jobs that people can do. But I'm seeing too many smart people being trained for janitor jobs. That just makes me crazy.